It is hot. And I think Ladybug just told me what to wear. Hey my friends, this is video number 9 of my Ultimate Ladybug course and we'll look further into data analysis. We're almost there. We're almost at the point where we start to look into actual modeling and designing things. But let's, let's go through everything. Let's try to cover everything because what it does is later on when we are in a, in a tool, we realize, oh, in order, to, in order to solve a certain problem, we have this and this elements we can use. That's the whole point. So let's jump in and we look further into data analysis tools. All right, we are here. We are in Rwanda somewhere. And what we did, we got a uh, weather data. Go back into, into the videos if you need. But we got a weather data. We try to modify the weather data that it fits our design, our, our location. It's not perfect, but it's, it's the best we have. And <clears throat> in the last few videos, in the last few videos, we looked into the into comfort models without any design yet. We have no we have no design. We have only a location and we have a weather data. And uh, but we can we can create some assumptions or we can we, we can get some ideas of how the comfort might be for outdoor and indoor. And there are different models. And we looked at that. So we looked at the adaptive comfort. We looked at the PMV comfort, the PET comfort, and the UTCI comfort. The first two are indoor comfort models, and the second one is outdoor comfort models. Now you say, oh, we don't have a building. How can you measure indoor? Yes, exactly. It's just an estimation. We're just getting a feeling for it, let's say. We also needed the solar mean radiation temperature, radiant temperature. That basically tells us a bit more about the shading aspect of certain areas, um, that is the tool where we later on plug in our model, but we don't have a model yet. In any case, now we are here at these tools. There are some fun tools. One is the clothing by temperature and the comfort statistics, for example. And more where we can uh, de deconstruct headers and we can do something with the timestamp and, and all this stuff. And let's, let's have a look. So... First up, clothing by temperature. That's in, very interesting. And you might remember the uh, tool we used for the indoor model. Maybe I'll just go through that. So as you have seen here, we have the, um, the PET comfort model. This was the one here on the top, this one. We have the UTCI model. This is the one below, slightly different, actually quite different. And then we have um, here on the top, the adaptive comfort model. This is for indoor models where we don't have any air conditioning and we did the PMV comfort model which is a model where we actually have an indoor air conditioning or in heating and cooling and both of these models they required this uh, indoor solar mean radiant temperature later on we will see that we can uh, plug in our, our 3d model but that gave us uh, a bit more idea about um, from where the sun comes the sky exposure uh, and, and loads of different things both needed this and um, but then the comfort models itself they also required certain input which were quite interesting so for example the pmv comfort needed the clothing in clothing input or as a as an optional uh, as an optional input there is a default value but you can be much more specific and what we said is that okay there is a tool which is called the ladybug clothing list which gives us a, a number for each piece of cloth you're gonna wear and adds the numbers together that creates our um, clothing list now there's another tool which is the clothing by temperature that's quite a it's it's a bit esoteric but what it does is basically gives us not just one number here it gives us basically a number for each day or for each hour i mean nobody changed the changes the temp, the clothes by hour but that's why how to use that thing here we provided basically one value we assume the person they use an underwear t-shirt trousers and a vest and that gave us this number here the 0.48 49 and you know that uh, what's written here is um one would be a three-piece suit, 0 0.5 is a shorts t-shirt kind of setup. Um, series would be naked if you're sitting naked in your building. This one gives you actually for, for a certain period or for the whole year, 
for each hour gives you a, an estimation what people might wear based on the temperature. That's quite interesting. So, okay, let's try that. Now the question is, and let's read also what it says here. So we don't make a mistake. Estimate levels of clothing using a temperature value or data collected of temperatures to which a human subject is adapting, typically the outdoor air temperature. So it assumes the outdoor te air temperature will define what a person might wear. It's quite fun. This resulting, I mean, especially because if you go outside, I mean, everybody wears something different. It's not that just because it's hot, everybody wears just a very thin t-shirt. But nevertheless, I think it's fun to look at. So let's let's just put the outdoor temperature. I mean, you could, of course, say, well, the outdoor temperature doesn't define what I wear inside. Exactly. So again, it's 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 interesting. You can specify a period. Let's not specify a period. Um, we could specify. So a maximum clothing means how, like what is the maximum a person might wear, and then the maximum clothing temperature is the temperature a, a person might. It's the temperature on when you reach that maximum of clothing. And the same for minimum. This is the opposite way. So minimum clothing would be when is the temperature where you don't basically wear nothing. Or you can you can say minimum clothing is underwear. And when when do we reach that temperature? That would be that that we could specify here. Because it's derived from the temperature, so that means it could go to a value where it's completely unrealistic. You you will not wear like two underwears and three shirts and and so on. And nevertheless, we let's let's keep it like that, um, and let's see what's inside. Let's see what's inside. There's a data value again. It has eight thousand seven hundred sixty values for every every um, hour of the year. And we can uh, what we need to do is we need to deconstruct data. Or probably not, maybe not. Uh, let's okay. Let's do this here. We get um, a relay. Relays are always good. No, we don't need two relays. So we have our one value for the whole year. Basically, they always wear the same thing, or they wear something based on the temperature. That actually works. So we don't need to have the deconstruct data set. Uh, well, we can actually look at it because that's actually important. That's important to see. So we can deconstruct the headers from the values. And, oh, no, this is here. And then we can see the values. So it's, it's always actually pretty much on the same level. It kind of optimizes a bit the output here. It feels like. It feels it's kind of optimizing it a bit. So if you compare it again. Here's a bit cooler. And with the right clothing, it's a bit more balanced. So it's slightly cold in some in some hours. Interesting tool. Now it, you could also now say the day today here. If I would now put my weather data, the weather data from where, from my location, and put it in here and like estimate what I would wear. Should we do that? No, let's save our time. I think you get what I'm what I'm saying here. It's just another way to input uh, or refine our PMV comfort model. All right, next up is the comfort statistics. The comfort statistics gives you basically an overview of uh, if it's too cold, too warm, too hot. Also. Um, you can use that for or for any of the comfort models. So we have four different comfort models here, and they all have an output which is, says comfort object. This uh, so the input here is comfort object, and you find this here at the end of all of the four comfort models, and you can place that in here. And it's very simple. It's just um, basically combines all the uh, all the hours which are too hot, which are neutral and too cold and create a percentage of it. You can just put here a label and put this in here. This is for the outdoor comfort, by the way, this is the um, PET comfort. This is the one here. So 92% of the time it's a bit too cool, let's say. It's not really cold, but uh, too cool. So people need to wear more uh, comfort. Then we have the UTCI comfort. Here it says 86% is neutral. It's questionable. It's qu questionable. But there you also see that they, they don't really agree with each other. Two outdoor comfort models, the pet 
PT comfort model is seems very much very uh, detailed. So also here is a clothing parameter. Let's let's add also the clothing parameters here. Let's I will kill this. It takes a while. It takes a bit longer to calculate. And let's get another 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 relay here. And let's see maybe it helps. Yeah, not really much. Um, this is by the way measuring the outer comfort where people are standing so if they're working it might be different so we can also put this here and put a bit more they are working 2.4 if they're if they're walking let's see working or walking working probably is even higher and actually you can see it's more spaced out i guess let's see here okay yeah that means it's only 89 only 89 percent of the time it's too co too cool so now with the indoor adaptive comfort, this is the model where we don't have an air condition, the, the model up here. It's actually quite warm, sometimes too hot. And it also has a comfort object. We can put this in here. Again, most of the percentage is too cool. Let's copy this again. And with a conditioned, oh, this is the comfort model again here. So only 50%, almost above 50% of the time is is slightly too cold so it's relatively cold there I'm a bit I'm a bit torn really because it's Rwanda yes it's quite high up so that's that maybe has to uh, that probably has the biggest influence the the altitude is quite high where I come from uh, that would also be super cold actually very cold during the the whole time so that is another tool so we have a we have this tool where we can basically give some easy simple statistics um, what else? We have the convert timestamp. With the convert timestamp object, we can change the interval of the data. So, for example, we have again we have the temperature. We could now, if we add a panel here, we see what's happening. So you can see here it says hourly continuous data collection. Now we could change the timestamp by, for example, two. And if I change it by two, it becomes it doubles basically the values. You have now um, values for every 30 minutes. If I go here on 0 0.5, oops, that didn't really change much. I don't know why. Um, if I go here on three, it will triple it. So 20, the times, the time interval is now 20 minutes and we have 2,680 values. Uh, sorry, 26,280 values. Um, just checking something here. I want to know what it does with the data. Uh, so for example, it interpolates whatever is in there. Should also work in a different, in the other direction. So you have, for example, a timestamp, which is every 30 minutes, then you can double it. Uh, you can, uh, divided to one hour our data but it basically interpolates also the data inside it's quite interesting so so if you have if you need a very smooth data then this tool is the right the right one to use could be interesting for animations for example but yeah we will, let's let's not get hanged up on this what's the next thing here the data date times what's this what is what is all about um okay we can take the data and the output is the date the hour, the hour of the day hour of the year it's basically the index of that so if i take this panel and copy then it just simply starts from zero this is the hour zero one two three four five and so on um you could also then add a period of time and try and, and then see what what happens so if i add a period to this or if i sorry that might not work no sorry that, that doesn't work um i need to use apply analysis period yes that's the one i need so i have data and i have a period let's see if we have a period somewhere did we use a period somewhere i think here yes now, if we change that to a different start month, let's say six, then we should actually, this should also then uh, move. Yes. So then we have the index shifted now also. So we're now in middle of the year and this is the hour 3624, 1st of June, midnight. We'll see later where we can use that. The, the hours of the year 
it can be interesting and they, are, they need it sometimes i'm not not sure if we need it exactly like this but yeah there are probably other ways on how you could use the period let's jump to the next one deconstruct header um again we can take a data set uh, let's just try something different direct normal radiation oh no no, no sorry we need first need to deconstruct the data <laughs> deconstruct data first we have the data so now we have the header and the values i can put the headers in here and that gives me the data type let's plug this in here data type direct normal radiation the unit what our per square meter the period metadata whatever is in there okay it's the the name the country time zone and the source with that it's basically if i want to create a new header i could reuse a header and just change whatever i need to change and then uh, recreate my header yeah maybe it helps to be a bit faster all right let's leave it here otherwise the video gets too long in the next video, we look into the directional solar irradiance tool. That's it's, It looks simple. It's a simple tool, but it's super powerful. So don't miss that next uh, episode. Okay, see you next time.